Hi, this is Pete Lyons with another Let's Play Salesforce video, and today we're going to be doing Einstein Analytics uh, Binding Basics Part 3. Where last we left off, we had created a bar chart that we can dynamically control the grouping and measure uh, through the use of a toggle and a static step. So today, we want to create a reference line that's going to be dynamically powered by a different step. So we're going to start by moving this guy over here. We're not done with it, but we're done with it for today. And we're going to create a step from the DTC opportunities. I want to group by industry. And I want the average of amount. And I want to sort it descending this time. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. We're going to get that guy on the screen. Now, we need a step that we can pull uh, an average from. So I'm going to clone this. I'm going to kill the grouping. And this is the average of uh, amount across all accounts and across all industries. We're not actually going to put this on the screen. We're going to use this to power our reference line. So the two steps that we've just created are industry underscore one and amount underscore one. So now we need to add a reference line to this. So I go to the x-axis, I click Add Reference Line. And I'm going to make the value of it 99999. And we'll see that now we have a little dark blue line right where that is. The reason why 99999 is just so that we can find it easier in our JSON. So let's take a look at what that created in our code. Control E to get to the editor, Control F for find. Hit that 9 button a bunch of times. And now we see that on measure axis 1 for this widget, we have uh, value and color that have been passed in. And the color parameter is going to accept either RGB or hex values. We will cover in a future video how to pass into this dynamically. Uh, so let's see what happens if we also add a label to the UI. We're going back to our x-axis, and we're going to enable, name it RefLine. Now we see a nice label appear on the line in the UI. And in our code, it's added the label parameter. So now we need to dynamically replace this 999 with the value that's coming from our other step. So remember, this is uh, industry one is the step that's powering the chart, and amount one is the step that's showing the average of amount that we want to use to control the position of the reference line. <clears throat> so we need to get rid of the nines. We just use them as a placeholder so we could find it. And our binding needs to be passed into compact form as a string. It's a binding, so it starts and ends with open close curl, or uh, with uh, double curlies. First, we need to tell it what part of the data we want. We want a column. Then the column function takes two parameters. The first is going to be the name of the step. The second is going to be an array of columns that we want to pass in. We only want one column. The name of the column needs to be enclosed in escaped quotes. These are your air quotes again. And here we need to pass in the column name, which is going to be average underscore amount. Now, let's take a look back at amount one real quick. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to hit Control F, hit Enter. Now notice how the measure is an array that says AVG amount. But what it's actually creating, the field that we're sorting by, AVG underscore amount, that's the field that gets created. Um, because every step is really a table. And it creates this new column, AVG underscore amount, from uh, the result of this query. So let's go back to that. So that's why 
we need AVG underscore amount instead of AVG in quotes, comma, amount in quotes. Now we need to give it a data serialization function. I want it as an object. And because it's a function, it must end with open close parentheses, even if that function takes no arguments. So uh, what are we saying here? Go and get the average amount column and return the result of that as an object. And I did forget one important thing here. After the step name, we need dot result. Now in previous lessons, we've been doing selection, which is to say, I want what the user has currently clicked on. With result, we want to know the, the sum total of what's in that column. So that's going to be the actual number of 1.1 million. So we go ahead and hit done. And now we see that our reference line is at the position 1.1 million. So uh, this completes part three. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, and if you did, please like, uh, subscribe. Hope to see you again next time. And thanks for watching.